As I was crafting my talk today and I was thinking about our theme, the beauty of small things, I was taken back in time to a very special trip I took with my parents and brother when I was five years old. Now on this trip, we traversed the globe. We saw the world's monuments, big and small, and we visited a number of countries. Now we did this all by walking. And you say, how is this possible? Well, we had the world at our footsteps, literally because we were giants. Here's my brother and I, and we are at this wonderful place called Tivoli Miniature World. It no longer exists. It's forever etched in the landscape of my memory. But it was just outside of my hometown in Toronto, Canada. And what was really wonderful and magical about this place was that it had all of the world's monuments miniaturized in, in one place. And if you look in the background, here we are, proud Canadians standing in front of the Parliament building. But if you look in the background, you can see the Pyramids of Giza and just the top of the uh, Duomo in Florence. And it was a really magical place. Here we are having a little uh, time out in front of the Cologne Cathedral. It's quite exhausting traveling the world when you're five. And again, this place was quite magical. There's something really enchanting about seeing the large transformed into the small. Fast forward 28 years later and I still absolutely adore traveling. It's one of my favorite things. And I have a particular affinity for being up really high when I visit places and I think this miniature place that I, I visited has something to do with it. And on a side note, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here in Dubai where you have the world's tallest tower. Now, that was actually held, that title was held by the CN Tower in Toronto many years ago. So congratulations to you, Dubai, for now having the tallest structure in the world. And as I said, I, I love to travel, and the miniature for me has always been really enchanting and magical. And it found its way of seeping into my travel photography. And I've got a couple of photographs here to show you, and these are all real places. Now, it's a technique called tilt shift, and it has this effect of miniaturizing places and giving locales this almost toy-like quality. This is just outside of Switzerland in a town called Lucerne, and you can see these trucks are now almost transformed into little toy cars. Here we are in Sydney at the Opera House in Australia. This is the Colosseum in Rome. And so again, you can see how there's this miniature-like effect and these people have almost transformed into these little toy-like figurines. A beach just outside of Nice in France. And one of my favorite places, in fact, this is a, a small town just outside of uh, Monaco. It's called Ez. And so I took these photographs and I emailed them around to family and friends. I didn't give them much of an explanation of what the technique was all about. And I just, I said, take a look, let me know what you think. And I had some really interesting responses. One of them was this. Are the photos not models? I'm confused. And in fact, just before I left, I was showing my brother, we had a good laugh over those old photographs, and I was showing him my slides for today's presentation, he said, okay, that photograph, the one with the tiny giraffes, that's not real, you just snuck that in there, right? Those are toy giraffes. I said, no, no, all of these photographs are of real places. And I think perhaps one of my favorite comments that I received was that this photograph looked like a picture out of a children's book about some imaginary land. And for me, there was something really flattering about that. And I love this idea of the imaginary, of, of make-believe, and this is something that I will return to. Now, the tilt-shift effect, it can skew our reality, it can skew our perception, it really plays on our imagination, and shows us something in a really new kind of way. And that brings me to my current line of work, which is augmented reality. 
Augmented reality is a technology I've been working with for the past five years as both a designer and a researcher. And augmented reality, like Tilt Shift, invites us to see things in a new way, and it quite literally opens up a window onto another world. So what is augmented reality? Well, we can think of it in terms of virtual reality. In virtual reality, we're closed off from our physical world. We're completely immersed in a computer-generated environment. Now, in augmented reality, we have the opportunity to still be in our physical surroundings, in our actual space, and now hold up an augmented reality device, such as a smartphone or an iPad, and be able to see different information layered on top of our reality. So how does this work? Well, the augmented reality-enabled device will have software on it. And the software, when it recognizes a symbol, an object, or an image, will then replace additional content. So in this case, a virtual butterfly appears. And I'll, I'll show you some more examples of augmented reality. One industry that augmented reality can be particularly useful in is architecture and urban planning. It allows us to layer the future onto the present. So we can imagine looking at the cityscape of Dubai, holding up an augmented reality-enabled device, such as an iPad 2, and be able to see what the cityscape may look like in three weeks from now or perhaps three years from now. And this can all be done in real time. So we can see these layered visualizations, images, renderings, as though they are in our present reality. In addition to looking to the future, augmented reality can also help us look back to the past. So we can imagine visiting historical sites and be able to see what those places once looked like. Augmented reality allows us to discover our environment and to be able to explore and see other worlds layered atop our current situation. And from the big, we return to the small. I recently created a children's book using augmented reality, and I've got a video that I'll walk you through. It's a children's book called Who's Afraid of Bugs? And it can be enjoy enjoyed alone as a regular book. However, you can also enjoy it with augmented reality. Now, there are different physical pop-ups that you can go through the book and explore. However, the real magic happens when you hold up an augmented reality device and use it to explore the book and discover 3D objects that may appear. So in this case, we have a spider creeping its way into the book. And you can place your hand underneath the spider, and you can interact with it. Now, this book was actually inspired by psychotherapy studies that were done in augmented reality. And in augmented reality, as opposed to psychotherapy in virtual reality, it created a safe test environment for exposure therapy for people to be able to interact with these virtual objects that appeared as though they were in their real space. Now I'm quite interested in how augmented reality can be used in storytelling and in education. And in this instance, when you hold up the augmented reality device and go through and explore the book, you can then hyperlink to additional content. So here we'll see a 3D ant appear. And when we click on this, it will then bring up more information about that specific object, or in this case, this, um, this creature. And so we can see how augmented reality then can be used to enhance and to show additional content and information. And again, going through and using the iPad to explore and discover different worlds throughout the book. Now, I'm always quite taken by how visceral or an emotional response people have to the book. Especially the spider, people are actually quite spooked out and afraid by it. And that tells me that I'm doing something right because I'm creating a believable experience.
Now there is a word that I said I would return to. It's a word that is quite critical to my practice and to my research. It's something I must cultivate every day. This word is make-believe. It's a word that carries with it great promise and possibility, dreaming and imagination. When we make believe, we're in two places simultaneously. We're projecting our imagination atop a current situation or circumstance. And in many ways, this is what augmented reality also is. We are projecting visualization and other worlds atop of our existing reality. Now, it's an interesting word for me and something I'd like to, to break down because I am both a maker as a practitioner and a believer as a researcher. So as a practitioner, I make. I do, I create, I design. As a researcher, I believe. I dream, I aspire, and I hope. So this makes me a make-believer working in a technology that is about make-believe. Now, one extraordinary make-believer that really inspires my work in augmented reality is Georges Mallier. He is a, or rather he was, a filmmaker and a magician. Now, he's an excellent make-believer for two reasons. When he was introduced to cinema, he was immediately just taken aback and in love with the medium. And he approached the inventors of the film camera and asked them if he could purchase one of their cameras. Now, he was turned down. Being the amazing make-believer that he was, he went on to create his own camera. And 500 films later, he became known as the father of special effects. The second reason why he's an amazing make-believer is that he went on to create the impossible in cinema, creating and inventing new techniques that were never seen before. And we find ourselves at a similar time in augmented reality, where I'd like to think of we're in the Georges Méliès phase of augmented reality, where we need more artists and creative adventurers, more make-believers, to really explore this medium and push it forward. And this is where all of you come in particularly as we are here in Dubai, a place that is about making the impossible possible. I ask each of you to tap into your inner make-believer and really own this and allow this to make your wonderful dreams into amazing realities. Thank you so much.